Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I want to go quickly over the forces involved with banked curves. Before we start, please remember to subscribe, and if this is particularly helpful for you, maybe consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. Now, I do have a video which goes into much greater detail of banked curves, so today is going to be just a short version. Now, what is a banked curve? Well, we have a car that is going to go, and I'm going to draw it over here, that is going around a track that is circular. But what we have, and here's my little car like this, and we obviously have a centripetal force that is resulting in the car remaining in the circle but often what they do with the road surfaces is they bank them they put them on an angle because that increases the opportunity to travel faster around that curve so that's what we're going to be looking at and we're going to look specifically at the angle in this case of our banked curve and that's going to be the angle that we have here so we'll need our car over here and I'm just going to do what all physicists do simplify things by drawing rectangles and then we ask ourselves the question what are the forces acting on the particular car and in our case we're going to simplify it by ignoring frictional forces at this stage we're going to keep it nice and simple and we have two basic forces the first is of course the force due to its weight or mg and the second force is the force that is the normal force acting in that direction now you can see now that those two forces if they add up we get a value that is the sum total of those forces which is going to be a direction in that point there and that ends up being the centripetal force so in other words the centripetal force is the result of those two forces acting again remember we're not including friction in this particular analysis now how do we therefore combine those things? And there's a couple of ways that we can do this. And one of them is simply by drawing a nice vector diagram. And so, for example, if I have my vector of my normal in this direction, I have my vector of my mg in that direction, I then have my net force, which is Fc, in that direction like so. And what that means is I can now actually work out mathematically the relationship with this and that is because this angle right here happens to be this angle right there and so now what we can see is that we have the tan of theta is equal to the centripetal force which is mv squared over r divided by mg and then when we simplify that we get v squared over gr in other words v ends up being the square root of g R tan theta. And what you notice straight away is that the mass is not in the formula anymore. What we say is it is independent of mass. The velocity of an object that is able to stay in circular motion is not dependent on its mass itself in this particular case. If the velocity increases, it will slide up the hill. If the velocity decreases, it will slide down the hill. But mass plays no part. Now that's one way of trying to resolve it and we use vector analysis but I want to quickly touch base also on a component way of doing this. You can see that the normal has two components. It has a vertical component. In this case if this is angle right here is the value of theta then this becomes theta as well and then of course we have our horizontal component which is this component there and you can see straight away that the normals horizontal component let's call this nx happens to be the centripetal force which we know is mv squared over r what about the vertical? Well, you can see in that case, my vertical component is equal to mg because we have a net force in this case of zero. Now, nx ends up being n sine theta and ny ends up being n cosine theta. And now what you can see is, well, if I divide this and then divide this, you'll see I, my ends cancel out. I have tan theta on the bottom over here. And then over here, I end up getting exactly the same I had before. And that is V squared over GR. And I get exactly the same relationship I had before, but this time we did component analysis. 
Now, if I were to add fiction to this, this becomes a little bit more complex. And generally in high school, you don't necessarily need to be able to do that in exam conditions because it's a little bit more involved. But the principles is exactly the same. You would just simply add a vector of the frictional force direction. And in this case, it is either going up the plane or down the plane automatically. You actually get two scenarios that we need to explore and it becomes more complex. But in this case, the frictional force is equal to mu times the normal. And in this case, you just add this to your component analysis. And I go through that in my more fulsome video. So check it out. I hope that has helped you understand banked curves. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.